Hi, my name is Julia Blake and I want to spend a little bit of time explaining what the three most time sensitive actions are you need to take to comply with GDPR if you aren't already compliant. So first of all, GDPR is enforceable in less than two weeks time and it seems as though it's just suddenly appeared and yet we've all been talking about it for months. So it feels as though we're in a departure lounge getting ready to go on a very long flight <clears throat> and I want to use the metaphor that I want to show you that actually the destination we're going to is a very nice destination. I want to bust through the, um, the, the negativity about GDPR. So why do I care? Well, <clears throat> I help businesses grow. That's what I do. I like being organized. I like things being efficient and I like things taking the least amount of time possible so that we can achieve more in our day and in our lives. And one of the biggest inefficiencies I see is that of data. Data in clients' businesses is all over the place. So I take systems and I take processes and I translate them into a language that the business owner understands. And the end result of this is an increased amount of headspace for a business owner, increased revenue because they make more of their data and decreased costs because they have repeatable processes in place. So that's why I embraced GDPR. It's a fabulous opportunity for businesses to make themselves more efficient. But the data protection law and GDPR in particular are complex and huge and very difficult to interpret. So I teamed up with data expert and data guru, Andrew Roberts and others, and together we have created the best GDPR solution for the small business owner. So what's all the fuss about? Why is GDPR so big? Well, the way we communicate with people has changed significantly over the years and something needs to be done. And GDPR has actually uh, come out of a human rights movement. It's a mindset change. That data now belongs to the individual rather than to the business. So GDPR is a good thing. And the 25th of May is a line in the sand. It's a starting point. The ICO has said to small business owners that as long as they are taking concrete steps to compliance, then um, not to panic. But there are things that we need to do. We need to make sure that we know what data we have and what we're doing with it. And GDPR covers processing of data, which includes storage. So it's not all <clears throat> about communicating, emailing out, etc. It's about storage of that data. Data is being elevated in our businesses in a way that it hasn't ever been before. We're all thinking about it so much more, and that's a real opportunity for us. So what do you need to do to be compliant? Well, there are three time sensitive areas that I'm going to go through that you need to take action on to be compliant. There are other things you need to do to be compliant, but these are the three main time sensitive areas. So the first one is have a look at your data and establish what data processing segments you have. As I just mentioned, processing is storage as well as transmitting and using that data. It's about storage as well. When you have worked out what processing segments you have, you can work out which of the six lawful reasons you're going to use to process data in that segment. The one we're hearing most about is of course that of consent. And this applies most of all to B2Cs. And when I say B2C, consumer is, includes, um, sorry, B2C includes consumers, as well as sole traders, as well as partnerships. So if you have anybody like that on your lists, in your segments, you need to separate those out, separate out the B2C from the B2B, it is likely that the lawful reasons for processing could be different for those two segments. If you have a list of people, a list of data that is that you have asked for consent on, if that consent complies with GDPR, then you don't need to reach out and ask them to re-consent. We're seeing lots of emails from people and actually they may not need to be asking for, for consent. The main areas to think about there, when you asked for consent originally, was the consent box pre-ticked? If it was, it doesn't comply with current GDPR. The second area, did the individual know what they were signing up for and are you sending them the relevant information that they signed up for? If the answer is no, then you're not compliant. The third thing to think about there is, did you incentivize that individual to join a list? 
and the likelihood is that if you did then you are probably not compliant so the most important action to take now is to reach out to anybody that you think has consented to hear from you in an uncompliant way and invite them to consent to hear from you in a compliant way. The third area to think about is your privacy notice or your privacy policy and this includes your business's response to individuals rights and you can gather the information that you've created and documented in the uh, two actions I mentioned before so the data segment process and segments and the consent and you can feed that into your privacy policy you can then put your privacy policy onto your website and then you can have a link to that privacy policy in your communication so they are the three main things that you need to do. They are the three ma main time sensitive things that you need to do. There are other things you need to do as well. The GDPR Compliance Roadmap Toolkit that we've created, especially for business owners, is will help you go through all of those areas. It will, it's a step-by-step -step guide to compliance and it gives you all the documents you need to be compliant, inc including a, a templated privacy policy and the data processing worksheet and cookies policy. It's jam-packed full of overviews, templates, checklists, explanations. So do click on the link and have a look at that. I'm also running a webinar tomorrow on Wednesday, um, Tuesday the 15th of May uh, to answer questions on the GDPR Compliance Roadmap Toolkit and to answer general GDPR questions. So do join me on that if you have questions that you'd like us to answer for you. Thank you for joining me.